In 2015, Volkswagen covered up a scandal that affected millions of cars and cost the company $30 billion. There's never been a better time to buy a Jetta TDI clean diesel. It started when the German automaker began a clean diesel marketing push, which suggested their cars were environmentally friendly. See how clean it is? It's not dirty, but you still have a dirty mind. Turns out clean diesel was just a dirty lie. The automaker claimed it used a system that helped convert harmful nitrogen oxides, a common type of air pollutant, into harmless nitrogen and oxygen. NOx are a family of gases that can cause asthma, bronchitis, and contributes to smog. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency required new diesel vehicles to emit no more than 0.07 grams of NOx per mile. Volkswagen claimed it emitted no more than 0.04 grams of NOx per mile. So it was quite a shock when three students at West Virginia University tested two Volkswagen diesel cars and found their emissions were off the charts. They polluted way over the limit on all of the five routes they drove in and around San Francisco, San Diego, and LA. According to their study, the NOx emissions for vehicle A, the Volkswagen Jetta, were 15 to 35 times higher than the EPA standards. Those for vehicle B, the Volkswagen Passat, were five to 20 times higher. The car models were kept anonymous in the paper, but we now know their identities. This chart is especially revealing. The green line, way at the bottom, reflects the EPA emission standards. The two Volkswagens went way over the allowed emissions. Emissions for the third vehicle they tested, a BMW X5, crept up only during the hilly drive. The scientists thought to themselves, were they screwing up the tests? They couldn't be. They had driven the cars numerous times. They began to suspect something that they didn't dare say out loud. Volkswagen was cheating. It takes a lot of guts to accuse a multi-billion dollar company, the second largest automaker in the world, of cheating. But that's exactly what Volkswagen was doing. The nonprofit International Council on Clean Transportation, which commissioned the study by West Virginia University, turned its findings over to the Environmental Protection Agency. The EPA later revealed Volkswagens were emitting up to 40 times more pollutants than allowed by law. Not only did Volkswagen deceive regulators, it deceived consumers who believed they were purchasing environmentally friendly cars. So how did Volkswagen manage to mislead everyone? It had installed software that could detect whether the car was being driven on the road or tested in a laboratory. When it noticed it was being tested in a lab, the software told the car to behave by activating controls to temporarily reduce emissions. It knew it was being tested in a lab when the car acted differently. Anna Stefanopoulou, a professor of mechanical engineering at the University of Michigan, explained to Wired, computer sensors monitor the steering column. Under normal driving conditions, the column oscillates as the driver negotiates turns. But during emissions testing, the wheels of the car move, but the steering wheel does it. That seems to have been the signal for the defeat device to turn the catalytic scrubber up to full power, allowing the car to pass the test. A catalytic scrubber is a device installed in the exhaust system of a vehicle to reduce the emission of harmful pollutants like nitrogen oxide. Once the car was back on the road, the deceptive software would switch off, allowing it to again exceed the standards. When the researchers at West Virginia University drove the cars on the road, they emitted far more pollutants than when they tested the same vehicles in a California laboratory. In the lab, emissions were below EPA regulations, shown in green. The scientists did not explicitly accuse Volkswagen of deception, but it was clear when you read between the lines. Vehicles A and B were operating as intended and did not have any malfunctions. In other words, this was no mistake. The cars were operating exactly as VW intended. Okay, so when they published their study in 2014, Volkswagen is freaking out. But executives choose not to come clean or admit to any wrongdoing. Even though the California Air Resources Board, which oversees air pollution control efforts in the state, grew suspicious and did its own tests, Volkswagen argued that the regulator's testing was flawed, that the outside air pressure affected the results, that the routes were inconsistent. Nevertheless, Volkswagen said it would update the engine software for diesel cars, starting with 2009 models. You might think Volkswagen was trying to fix the problem of excess emissions, but actually the recall enhanced the ability of the software to detect when the car was being tested. In other words, Volkswagen used the recall so that it could cheat even better. 
After the software update, the cars did emit less than they had, but they were still not within legal limits. The California regulator grew even more suspicious. It noticed emissions of nitrogen oxides rose after 23 minutes of driving, which happened to be one minute after the end of a standard test cycle. Volkswagen was cornered and couldn't come up with any more excuses. In September 2015, it finally admitted to regulators that its diesel cars were equipped with software to cheat emissions testing. It was later revealed that Volkswagen had been aware of the cheating for years, but had chosen to keep it a secret. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission claimed top executives knew about the fraud as early as 2007. At the time, Volkswagen's market share in the U.S. was a mere 1%. It was trying to do what it could to compete with Toyota to become the world's largest automaker. Yet it knew its engines couldn't meet America's stricter emission standards. There were also allegations of cheating in emissions testing by other car companies, but none to the same extent. Volkswagen admitted that the software was installed on 11 million of its cars, most of them in Europe, where diesel-powered vehicles were popular at the time. The company recalled all 11 million vehicles to remove the deceptive software and also to retrofit the cars to meet emissions regulations, a time-consuming and costly endeavor. But the biggest expense came when Volkswagen had to pay about 30 billion in fines and settlements, which is far more than it would have cost to install adequate pollution control equipment in the first place. Several top executives at Volkswagen resigned, including CEO Martin Winterkorn, who maintained he was unaware of any wrongdoing. The company insisted that the illegal software was just the work of a couple of rogue engineers. In the month following Dieselgate, Volkswagen's worldwide sales fell 5%. There was even speculation that Volkswagen was finished. Yet, Volkswagen was able to weather the storm and has largely recovered. In 2022, it was the second best-selling automaker in the world, behind Toyota. The company regained consumer trust in part by introducing electric and hybrid vehicles, advancing its commitment to sustainable transportation. It is determined to sell more EVs than Tesla by 2025. But there's a long road ahead, as automakers have lost billions. This doesn't just affect you trying to buy a car. The everyday investor is getting whacked by the tremendous price fall. Because the S&P 500 is the most popular index used by the public to build their personal wealth, and it includes a lot of exposure to automakers and their stock. But there is an asset class that has outpaced the S&P by more than 130% over the last 26 years. I'm talking about contemporary art. The art market used to be impossible to access unless you were super rich. With Masterworks, everyone can enter the high-end art market without spending millions. You can invest in multi-million dollar artworks by Banksy, Basquiat, and Monet. All of the offerings have been qualified by the SEC, and every painting Masterworks has sold to date has returned a profit to investors. The results from these 11 paintings speak for themselves. 652,000 people have signed up for Masterworks. There's a waitlist for new users, but you can skip the waitlist by clicking on my custom link in the description.